Hello, welcome back to my channel, Sagittarius. If you're new here, I'm Cloak Conscious, and I'm doing a reading for the upcoming week of October for my Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sagittarius, or any uh, placements that are aspected, amplified by the upcoming transit. I don't know what I'm saying, but anyways, you get what I'm saying. So yeah, look at your chart, see how those planets are affecting that Sagittarius energy in your chart. And this is my co-star, Mimsies. She's perfect. Anyways, she's she's technically the main character, but um, and I know you guys are here for her, but um, I'm just gonna get going with it. Rolling with the punches. So I'm using a new deck. It is new to you, not new to me. I mean, it is kind of new to me because I've had it for a while, but I've just never used it because. I wanted to save it for this special occasion since Halloween's coming up. So I'm going to be using my book for reference if you notice that, okay? So let's get started for my upcoming week for Sagittarius placements for the upcoming week of October. Divine higher power positivity. What should my Sagittarius friends expect for this upcoming week? of October. Okay, so right now we have Hanged Man. By the way, I don't do reversals. So this did come out in reverse, but I don't do reversals. Because, um, nope. I don't know. I just don't. So, I got Hanged Man. You gotta change your perspective on something. Oof. Baby. Do the third sign in a row that has been told this. We're all going through this transit together. All right, what is it? We have Knight of Bats. Let me see what else, if anything else comes up. No, okay. Knight of Bats, which is the Knight of Swords. So I think this new idea that you were kind of attached to or that you were curious about whatever this rabbit hole was that you discovered universe does not want you to go down this rabbit hole or maybe i'm totally wrong because i just thought of alice in wonderland right now because a change in perspective would be to go down that rabbit hole like alice in wonderland right hmm. Hmm. let's get some clarifying do you want them to go down this rabbit hole or do you not want them to go down this rabbit hole? Spirit, let's see. Okay, we have the death card and page of imps. I think imps are wands. Let me clarify. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Well, death card is all about doing something new. Well, letting go of the old so that way you can bring in the new. But the page events, I think it does want you to go down this rabbit hole. Um, okay, universe, what should, what do you suggest Sagittarius find in this rabbit hole? It's giving Alice in Wonderland, too. You need to rewatch it. You need to rewatch it. It's telling you something. And you have Tower, dude. You hang man, death, and Tower? Please. Please. Can your life get any more chaotic than this okay you gotta you gotta watch alice in wonderland it's giving alice in wonderland right now okay well what advice do you have for sagittarius all right we had a card fall out oh we had two cards fall out there's six of bats and page of bats Thank you. Anyways, so six of bats and page of bats. You've had
So it says six of bags, better times lie ahead, a literal or figurative journey, taking a strong action to overcome difficulties. A literal or a figurative journey, like Alice in Wonderland. Anyways, and then page of bats, it says an eager, graceful, intuitive young person on a fact finding mission, a flare of spider. Dude. Are you having a spiritual awakening? It feels like it. Very big spiritual awakening. It's like an ego death. It's like you took mushrooms or acid. Like you took some type of psychedelic. And I mean, it, this could be metaphorical. Like, you know, figurative. Like you may not have actually taken it. But the experience of what you're going through right now is the same. One in the same. So people take psychedelics so that way they can have this like trip, but this trip is like connecting with their like intuition and their spirit side, their spirit self. Um, and just like, you know, everything that goes on in that stuff with those intentions is like you're dealing with childhood traumas and addressing generational curses and forgiving and grief and all kinds of stuff. Oh, going through all that. And um, I, it kind of feels like you're going through a spiritual awakening and an ego death at the same time. It's like you're detaching from yourself, your religion, your name, your ethnicity, your culture, everything. I feel like the, you just discovered this wormhole that is taking you to a completely different dimension and you're just rediscovering yourself but from your point of view, but from your perspective and experience because a lot of people don't realize that we live and express ourselves um, and identify ourselves with experiences other people have placed onto us where like the the versions of them are versions of us that they've created for us so and a lot of people don't want to admit that that's fine you know when when you go through your own spiritual journey you'll realize that you've been clinging on to an identity that ain't you an identity somebody else gave you and so a lot of times this happens with religion this happens with culture this happens with you know, um, just typical societal things that influence us, you know, um, so, and a lot of people don't realize that. And you know what we call that? Indoctrination. We are indoctrinated from birth, okay, before you even came out the womb. Based on your private parts, certain par parents have had specific colors and things that they had in mind for you to do. They wanted you to do a certain sport. They wanted you to play a certain interest instrument or do this and that. Was that you? Was it ever you? Did you ever come into this world and find that and discover it on your own because you were truly passionate about it? No, probably not. Very slim, slim to few. And the ones who do come on, come on to those things based on their own experiences because they're truly passionate about it, they're usually, usually not professional, but like uh, extremely talented. Like you don't have to go professional with it, but you're like extremely talented because it's coming from you at your core. So if you're just working your ass off, I'm not saying that you won't be successful one day, but why are you working your ass off for something that you are not naturally, spiritually gifted with? Have you ever taken the second to recognize or consider that this dream of yours that you're trying to fulfill isn't yours? It's probably your parents or your families or, you know, what the, the pressure from society told you you needed to do. Like if you are naturally great at a certain subject in school and, and now everyone's like okay you should just do specifically the subject or you should specifically do this and you're like well actually my skills can take me in a completely different direction but 
instead of considering this other direction that I want to go in, I'm just going to go in this other one because everyone's telling me I'm good at it and I should go do this, you know, or they want me to do this because they need somebody to do this. I don't know. Just, just think about it because it, it really does feel like, uh, universe is telling you like <laughs> you're going through this whole awakening of like detaching from this old identity of yours. It's, it's a trip. I remember when I went through mine, I went, I, I had, it took a lot of grieving. So a lot of grieving and a lot of recognizing that even though it was other people's projections of me, I believed them. Therefore I was accountable for the things that I said and I did and believed and behaved. Um, even though other people were like, oh, you should do this, you should do this. Or they put me in a situation if it was my parents telling me I had to do this and I would do it and then I would get mad when it didn't work out or it backfired on me. And I'm like, I never wanted to do this. I was only doing this because so-and-so forced me to do this. And I had to learn to stop blaming everybody. I chose to go down the path that other people wrote for me. You know, they wrote the script, I played the part. And I think you're recognizing that you don't need to do that. You're recognizing that you can write your own script and play the part that you want. Because that's just how life is, right? It's beautiful like that. Uh, but a lot of people don't recognize that. And they will go their whole life being born one thing and die to their grave thinking that they were always that thing. And it's like, who's going to tell them? Who's going to tell them that if their parents were completely different religion and ethnicity living in a completely different part of the world that they would be a completely different person who's gonna tell them that why would they believe that i mean it's called culture you are literally the product of your environment and most people are we're on just we're unconsciously unaware while we're going through life and we don't care either we just care about the identity that we cling to. And that's why we have so many problems politically because it's all about who can you identify with? Same thing with religion, who can I identify with? Same thing about, um, you know, race, who can I identify? It's like, damn, you care about your identity way too much. And I'm not saying you do, but I'm saying other people do, you know? And I think you have come to a point where you're recognizing, whoa, I don't like this identity thing. And it's shattering and you're you're gonna come out of this like a butterfly you went in as a caterpillar people made you a caterpillar and you thought for a while you were a caterpillar and then you had your spiritual awakening where you put yourself in a cocoon and then you came out of it and you were a fucking butterfly why is that because you were always a butterfly you were always meant to be a butterfly it's just you were born into a world as a caterpillar because your parents and your family and society told you you were a fucking caterpillar and you were not a butterfly. They didn't even know what a butterfly was. And then when you recognize that you didn't want to identify as a caterpillar and you became a butterfly, look at how beautiful you are. Look at you soar, look at you fly, look at you live. Caterpillars don't fly. No, they don't. Why is that? Because they're not butterflies. They can become a butterfly, but that's if they choose to let go of culture and society and indoctrination and all that good stuff. So anyways, I think you get my message. Let's see what advice spirit has for you. Okay, so it says elephant resolve. You will overcome any obstacles. And you have a possum strategy. Have a backup plan. So maybe what you're going through is going to cause turmoil. It's going to get hot and heated because people are not going to like you when you when you when you become authentic. They're going to think you're fake. They're going to think you're going through something. Oh, they're they're crazy. Oh, they're they have demons on them or whatever. And it's like had you been born this way, they would have been saying the same shit. I mean, you were always this, but no one would allow you to be this. No one would allow you to be yourself. So you know, you're going to find a way to express yourself. Um, obviously, in the way that makes you feel accepted still. Because you still love, you know, if it's your family or your friends, your work or whatever this is. 
um, this, your society, your culture around you, you love it and you don't want to have to completely take yourself out of it and have to create like a new environment, like, you know, be a black sheep. So it does feel like you're probably going to have to like find a way to express yourself and be able to keep these people in, in situations in your life while being able to be authentic at the same time. Mm. And that's what this rabbit hole is about. You need to watch Alice in Wonderland. This, this is you. You're, you're Alice right now, okay? Well, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know how, um, how it goes. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I will see you guys next week.